I used to tell him just a little bit of this leaf coffee, a 35 cents there. I kept the sheet music so nobody could see it. If I was with you, you were the top. I dive to the bottom and I never come up all oh, how long do I have to wait? Can I get it now? Do I have to hesitate? And I chose printmaking because I felt if I felt it went more alignment with my philosophy and my personal philosophy in terms of that I'm able to make um, information in an artistic style that I can replicate and I can disseminate to many people. You're not just getting a simple copy, you're getting something that was labor intensive, that was done by my hand, that was rolled by my hand and so forth, and printed on paper that you can feel the embossment within the paper. One thing that's been consistent in my work is a concern for humanity. What drives me is people and seeing human bodies and the human experience and building the landscape of bodies and, and building narratives and polynarratives within that. I, I titled the piece Bird in Hand, uh, second line for Michigan. It alludes to in New Orleans um, that idea of the dirge in the second line. And the bird in hand also alludes to the idea of Michigan and that's the nickname that's given to it. I entered a major competition called Art Prize about two years ago. And I was trying to think of a piece that I could bring to Michigan. And the thing that really impacted me as I began to think about it was the, the disparities that Michigan was going through and, and one in particular in terms of the automotive industry. I created this old 1950 Chevy Coupe in the top right hand corner of the composition that I have four horsemen of the apocalypse are carrying away from a grave site. And the idea is that they're not going to the grave site, they're taking the car away as to rebirth it. The whole right side of the composition shows the dirge and the people are marching along and you see the sorrowful looks upon their face and the musicians are playing. You see a guy who's laying a handkerchief upon the ground and it's elongated across there and has an X upon the handkerchief. The handkerchief symbolically ties into the New Orleans tradition as it relates to the second line and the dirge. As it relates to the second line, that during funerals and weddings they were released white doves. The white dove was a symbol of the Holy Spirit. It got expensive at many funerals and weddings for that to take place. So what they got translated into was a white handkerchief. The white handkerchief now is in the hand of the person who then animates it by their movement and the movement of the hand which causes the flutter in the air and at a distance and if you looked at it with an imaginative eye you would note that the white handkerchief now looks like a bird flying. that same translation is there. That idea of the Holy Spirit invoking or taking over the person's body and they begin to animate it, that is what's embedded there. But as you get to the middle of the composition, I place a drum there. And on that drum it says Trime. And Trime is the name of the oldest African American municipality in the United States in New Orleans. Towards the, the full left side of the composition, I then show you people dancing and they reveling and moving all about. And they're celebrating because they're celebrating that which was dead now is alive again. And the, there's a large woman in the left hand of the composition and she's holding a hand up above her head and in her hand is the white handkerchief. And if you look at the very tip of the handkerchief, you see there's an eye on the end of it. So that's the dove, which is representative of the Holy Spirit, has come back alive. It is in direct opposition to that dead spirit at the bottom right hand part of the composition where you said the guy is laying it to rest with the X on, his, on the eye. I believe that we must engage one another in terms of a trueness and dealing with the issues that may be hard and those harder issues and so forth with the hope of renewal, with the hope of having a second line. But all the while understanding that we're in a constant state of loss and understanding that, that that's a process of our lives. It's damaging, whether you're conscious of it or you're not. So a lot of my work is about raising that kind of awareness and bringing to light stuff that gets sublimated and gets lost. But I am trying to put down concepts that get us to think and to think deeper about this life in which we live in and to think about what we're perpetuating. We have some deeper issues to deal with within the context of the soil of our nation. No matter how heavy the, the visual that you might see in there, no matter how hurtful it may be, at the base is beauty. Because there's power in the creation and there's power through the creator and there's a power through the maker of all that we see.